más tienes. En otros lugares tú tienes más porque tienes. No vas a curar un químico. ¿Qué le estás poniendo? Al igual que el ingrediente sale mucho. Ok, eh, el lado de mango. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our reaction video of the MTA committee meetings for the month of February. And this is your host, Jason Anthony, from his marvelous studios in Barham Hill, Brooklyn. Today was indeed a very productive, proactive day inside the MTA. The first board, uh, the first set of committee meetings without, uh, Andy Byford. But indeed, we had huge surprises. And, uh, we're gonna start off. Of course, we are we are going to start off with a tweet from WYC's uh, Stephen Nielsen that posted: "MTA says it's cutting service on a life-changing e-health on-demand program for 1,200 users, but it won't say exactly when this year. Users are." like this are anxiously waiting for updates. <clears throat> and of course we have uh, Sarah Ritz replying to Stephen saying that this is shameful. They spent decades shutting the disabled out. They finally gave them something useful so they can have freedom of movement. Then because it became so popular, so they cut parts of it. If they had such put in elevators instead of spending millions of dollars in lawsuits, shameful. <clears throat> well, in my opinion, this is my opinion, of course. Uh, disabled in action. Uh, the group from Sydney and other dis disability groups, for example, the group that Joe Rappaport uh, manages, have been going in 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 the past in the past few months. I'll say in the past six to nine months, they have been going in full force. But now, Andy Byford is gone. So, what's going to happen? We don't know. <clears throat> and then we have the New York Post reporter, David Meyer, posted good morning from two Broadway, the Long Island Railroad commuter rails. This guy is taking a proposed Long Island Railroad Metro Knife in city discount. And a source very close to me indicated that uh, Larry Schwartz in finance approved a uh, such discount. And then we have Pix 11's own grab marker. Posting a picture of Mario Poliquin with Grumpy Larry. As a matter of fact, people will even sleeping in the meeting, although that the meeting ended early, but left a lot of people wondering why. Uh, Tremont Tom John Thompson from Progressive Action posted this picture that <clears throat> when I saw this, I was like, excuse me, uh, then he posted, what more potential at MTA board meeting? What are they so afraid of? These MTA board members and executive wouldn't be 
able to survive one day in shoes of the front nine workers. Of course, they wouldn't. <clears throat> And then, yours lovely post that everybody is missing hashtag Andy Byford at MTA board meetings. Of course, <clears throat> then we have our Sally Libero giving the updates. Then we have our uh, Greg Cipriano. But <clears throat> And as you guys know, on Tuesday, I was a victim of a robbery in the Queens Plaza subway station. And Transit District 20 is still investigating uh, the cause. Who did this to me? Why there are cameras in mezzanine areas and on platforms. And also we found out that <clears throat> the MTA is going off a gangway with the R262. Despite the fact that we don't have open gangway cars yet on property. Look at this tweet. There will be ample time to test these cars and I think there's an opportunity to expedite these cars at a cheaper price. Says a quote of Larry Schwartz. Or oh, like I call him Grumpy Larry. And A.B. Collins posted this tweet, a meltdown on the L, post Andy Byford. Uh, let's see. <sighs> And of course, today we had Murray Bowden, uh, my fellow contributors Andy Quinto, Andy's Ramirez, and Charlton D'Souza from Passengers United uh, joined me today in to Broadway in the Financial District. And what's in store for Wednesday? We have the Diversity Committee and the Food Board. The Diversity Committee is at 9 a.m. and the MTA Board is at 9.30, the Food Board. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter at JasonBX0619. You can follow <coughs> You could follow Andy's Ramblings at Andy's Ramblings, uh, Passengers United at, at uh, Passengers Help at Andy Quinto 3. <coughs> and we all 
going to reply your tweet in a timely fashion. So, bottom line, in my opinion, the, the discounts should be unified. And it should be at the same level for everybody. For example, right now we have the letter ticket that covers uh, some low-lying railroad stations between Brooklyn and Southeast Queens. <clears throat> My apologies. I'm answering to Nila Rosario to a message that she that she sent me on Facebook. So basically, the latter ticket covers my home station, Latin Terminal, Brooklyn, North Street Avenue, East New York, Jamaica, St. Albans, Hollis, Queens Village, Locals Manor, Laurelton, and Rosedale. So it covers these 10 stations. Under the proposed, uh, let's say, a uh, city ticket, and in this amped city ticket, <coughs> on the Long Island Railroad territory, It will cover Penn Station, Long Island City, Hunters Point, Woodside, on the Port Washington branch of Mets Willis Point, Flushing Main Street, Maury Hill, uh, Broadway, Arbordale, Bayside, Douglaston. It will cover Forest Hills, Kew Gardens, Jamaica, Atlanta Terminal, Brooklyn, North Street Avenue, East New York. Uh, it will cover uh, Hollis, Queens Village, uh, St. Albans, Locals Manor, Lawton, and Rosedale. That's on the Long Island Railroad territory. On Metro North, <clears throat> All right, on Metro North, uh, let's let the map upload completely and let's zoom in. Okay, so it will cover GCT, Harlem 125th Street. On the Hudson Line, it will cover Yankees East 153rd Street, Morris Heights, University Heights, Marble Hill 225th Street, Spot in Divo, and Rosedale. No, not Rosedale, Riverdale. On the Harlem Line, it will cover Wakefield, Walt Lawn, Williams Bridge, Botanical Garden, Fordham, Tremont, and Melrose. And the same thing with the New Haven Line. It will cover GCT, Harlem 125th Street, Melrose, Tremont, Fordham, Botanical Garden, Women's Bridge, 
Woodlawn, and Wakefield. Okay, let's open the the Long Island Railroad uh, materials. And let's go to page 56. See, these are the stations of the Lorraine Railroad. These are Metro North. Let's see which stations are close to a subway station. Obviously, I like to run Brooklyn, East New York, Flushing Main Street, uh, Forest Hills, Hunters Point, Jamaica, uh, Long Island City, Nostrand Avenue, Penn Station, <coughs> on Metro North Botanical Garden, on Fordham, DCT, Bobble Hill that's near the one train, uh, Merrill's, on uh, Tremont, uh, Yankees East 153rd Street. Here are the, the eligibles. One way peak, one way off peak, Round trip. Multiple rides, monthly, weekly, 10 trip peak, and 10 trip off peak. See, right now, a monthly ticket mm. See, right now between along the Hudson Line, it will be between Yankees East 153rd Street and Riverdale will be 650 off peak. And, and <clears throat> on peak, it will be 875. If you do it between Merrill's and Wakefield, it will be the same price, $650,875, and the percentage is between 8 and 10%. So there's not that much difference. See, right now, of without the Atlanta ticket, a ticket from Atlanta to Brooklyn to Jamaica is $775. Because you're going from fair zone 1 to zone 3. That's Jamaica. But with the Atlanta ticket, it's $5. And also, if you're going to Rosedale, then it will be $5 also under the land ticket. But like Lisa Dagden said, uh, the fares has to be unified. The discount has been unified. And speaking of a little bit of everything, we are going to 
C. What board member Neil Sockerman said uh, this morning? Okay, let's see if as if we could find the moment that okay. Addition to capacity for the increased ridership. Um, and how this affects our other riders throughout the system from further points east. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your uh, not subtle uh, clarification that the legislature has imposed this on us. Uh, sometimes it is challenging in this organization to be a board member of something that in sometimes is quasi-independent, sometimes is not at all. But I think as a fiduciary and a representative of a certain geography, I feel obliged to raise issues regardless of whether they're imposed upon us or whether there are opinions alone. Um, and I will say I'm not opposed to discounts. I would like to pay less for anything. Uh, that's why Walmart is so successful. We get more for less. I don't mind that at all. But what I don't like, and I, I like Bob will cite Lisa. Uh, Lisa said in her opening remarks uh, at the public comments about equitable deal for all riders. She supports an equitable deal for all riders. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this discount, regardless of whether it's imposed on the legislator, regardless if it comes out of um, uh, congestion pricing, it is not equitable because, yet again, we are forgetting those who pay the most still get the least. Those who are sitting in Putnam, Dutchess, and Suffolk counties are spending $6,000 a year, $6,000 a year, somewhere upwards of $1,500 a year to park, and then a car, and then 40% have a Metro card on top of that. Ladies and gentlemen, it is an extraordinary amount of money we're asking those who are in the suburban counties, the exurban counties, to pay. And at some point, it breaks. It will not be able to, we will not be able to put more burden on those riders. I have two goals in 2020. One goal is to finally complete positive train control, and I appreciate all the progress that Kathy and Phil and the entire organization and our contractors are making. I, I uh, did not know if we'd get there, but thank God we're getting real close. And Kathy, congratulations on having two-thirds running in PTC. That's an extraordinary thing. But my second goal, as we start slumping towards our most recent fare increase or our, our, our more immediate fare increase at the end of this year that we're going to vote on and take public hearings on, I'm going to fight for flat fares for Metro North and for Long Island Railroad, because I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, my riders cannot afford any more, and that we are giving discounts for riding the same trains that my colleagues or that my constituents are riding and paying an exorbitant amount of money, well beyond anything, without any tests of discounts. I tell you, it is unfair. All right, that was board member <coughs> Neil Salkerman. Let's go to his point. Shall we? This is one of the, this is one I'm looking for. Okay, find your fare. Okay, detailed fare information. Okay, let's take the sample. The Harlem and Hudson Lines from GCT and Harlem 125th Street.
Okay, Garrison. That's his home station. Monthly, $437. Let's do some calculus. <clears throat> My apologies. Okay, we have four thirty seven times twelve. That's five thousand two hundred and forty four dollars. Per year. If I go to visit my cousin in in um let's say in Poughkeepsee, five hundred twenty one dollars times twelve. That'll be $6,252 a year. Let's see what's saying. 536 times 12, 6,432. And I'm bored? Forget it. <clears throat> so Neil's point is is valid. I'm going to turn off. Let's see L I double R. And we're gonna take the Montauk branch. Okay, detail, fair information. Okay, fair tables. And this is effective April 21st, 2019. See, and we start with within so one. That is Atlanta Terminal, Brooklyn, North Fern Avenue, East New York, Long Island City, Hunters Point, Penn Station, Woodside, Forest Hills, Kew Gardens, and Metz West Point. $197. If it's between <clears throat> so 1 and so 3, that includes Jamaica, Local Banner, Lowerton, Rosedale, St. Albans, Hollis, Queens Village, Flushing Main Street, uh, Murray Hill, Broadway, Auburndale, Bayside, Douglaston, and Little Neck, $234. Uh, between zone four, two hundred and seventy dollars. Fair zone seven, three hundred and eight. Zone nine, three hundred and sixty-three. Zone ten, four hundred and five. Zone twelve, four hundred and sixty-one. And zone fourteen that includes uh West Hampton, Hampton Bay, Southampton. Bridgehampton, East Hampton, Amagaset, Montauk, Greenport, South Home, Magnetic, and Riverhead. Five hundred dollars.
Let's multiply $500 times 12. Then we have a whopping $6,000 even. Let's do a comparison with Sunrail. And this is the perfect example. Of how how things work by county. <clears throat> See, number of counties. One way, within one county, two lotters, within two counties, three, within three counties, four dollars, between four counties, five dollars. And we are going to select from the barry to Ponciana. Look at this, $140. But annual, $1,400. And we're talking about, okay, if we, okay, if we count the amount of counties traveled, This is four counties. Four counties. Let's say Manhattan, Queens, Nassau, Suffolk. Four counties. The same amount of counties traveled. From New York County, that's Manhattan, all the way to Suffolk County, that's four counties. And by the same amount, look at this, a $4,600 difference between Orlando and the Long Island Railroad. Let's see between Orlando and Metro North. Damn it. That's not it. A savings of $5,032 between Orlando and Metro North. So, let's see if Metro North and Long Island Railroad changes the fare structure that instead of having it by fare zones, we should have it by the amount of counties traveled. That should be better. And on the long one, commuters like Neil Sockerman, the 
that him and I tend to disagree on things, but in this one, we could totally agree 100%. But here's the here's the thing. If congestion pricing doesn't go into effect, what will happen? What will happen with congestion pricing? Because right now the Trump administration is putting the the hold on congestion pricing, and we don't know when he will give the green light for con for congestion pricing. But to end this live stream. I want to tell you guys that you guys could find me on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, at, BX, at JasonBXNY0619, on Instagram, uh, and obviously here on YouTube. So, that's all for now. Uh, thank you for joining us on this Monday night. And stay tuned for the full board meeting this upcoming Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. at 2 Broadway. <clears throat> but let's say if someone wants to go to speak. Uh, it's pretty easy. You take the four or five trains to Bowling Green. When you exit, you're going to have the MTA building right across the street from the station. Or you can take the R or W trains to Whitehall Street and exit on the... Towards the end, if you're coming from Queens... Exit towards the end. If you're coming from Brooklyn, exit towards the front. And exit on the exit at Stone, uh, Stone Street and Whitehall. And around the corner, you have to Broadway. Please get there at least half an hour before the meeting begins. That you go that you could go through security. And at least find a decent seat. Or you can view it on their YouTube channel. Or better on, you go to mta.info and click on more. Okay, let's start from the beginning. When you are in the uh, MTA.info, you'll wear in the in the upper tab, go to more. And then you're going to find transparency. In this page, you're going to go in the section that says public meetings, hearings, and notices. And the first tab that you're going to see is board and committee meetings. And of course, they already posted the, cal the, the calendars from. June 2019 all the way to April 2020. And on each month, 
let's say February 2020, you have the schedule of the committee meetings. Oh, now we have diversity at 9, the audit reconvenes at 9.30, and at 10 o'clock the full board. So they changed it. And you will see that they have two live streams. This one that was from today, and this one that is from Wednesday. So, there are still excuses. So, that being said, I want to thank everybody for joining us. And we'll be back on Wednesday from 2 Broadway. Have a good night, folks.